guys, it's Bonnie. I am a super red tomato today, as you can see by my face. I, your guess is as good as my doctor's. Anyway, ignore this and this lighting. This lighting is probably really tragic because it's gloomy today and it's also 3 p.m. winter. Today I am here to film a very large book haul. So we should just get into the books. I'm sure I'm gonna title this like winter book haul, even though some of these are from like September and November. It's been a while since I filmed a book haul, so. First book I actually bought for a class that I had last semester, which was a children's literature course, Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson, because I wanted to read this anyway. And this is a book in verse about a girl Jacqueline Woodson and her life kind of growing up as a black girl in the 60s and 70s in the South and also in New York. Next I have A Monster Called by Patrick Ness. This is a very well known and very beloved book. It's about a child who gets a visit by a monster one night and that's kind of all I want to say about it because it's best to just kind of go into this book. I picked this up finally because the movie was coming out and I wanted to see the movie, although I never actually did that. For the past year or so, I haven't really been buying that many books, but there are two times a year that I always buy a decent amount of books, and that is when Book Outlet has their Black Friday sale and their Boxing Day sale. And so these next books I all got during the Black Friday sale. First one is The Mime Order by Samantha Shannon, which is the second book in the Bone series. Series? I don't think it has a different title. Next I got Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon, which is about a book who... I, about a book? It's about a girl that is allergic to everything and one day a boy moves in next door and things change. I know that sounds like super cliche and like whatever but it was really good and really fast paced. I know some people have problems with it for the representation of the illness itself um, so I would like look into that if you might not like that. I don't want to talk too much about it because I'm not very well versed in it and for other reasons that if you read the book you know why. My lipstick isn't coming off during this video because, ooh, that'd be tragic. I should probably go get my mirror. You still, oh my god, I have lipstick on my teeth. Anyway, what was I saying? This book I got from the Black Friday sale was Crest by Marissa Meyer. I read Cinder a very long time ago, and since then I've been like collecting the series. I enjoyed Cinder, it wasn't my favorite thing ever, but eventually want to get to this series. I feel like I'm gonna have to reread Cinder, which I really don't want to do because like I have so many books. Next I got Before I Go to Sleep by S.J. Watson. I don't know much about this but I know it's a psychological thriller and I really love psychological thrillers but I do not read them often enough. I don't know anything about this except I think it has something to do with like her forgetting stuff because I don't know. I remember there was like a movie but I've never seen it so I'm gonna read this and then I can watch the movie. How wonderful. Next I have Everything Leads to You by Nina LaCour. This is a book about a girl. Wow, I'm so helpful. I believe this has a girl that does something in the film industry. I remember film industry were words that were mentioned when talking about this book and also I think it's a female-female relationship. I'm really excited to get into it because it's diverse and the film industry is something that is very interesting to me because I love films and the Oscars even though they're hashtag so white all the time. Although this year has some potential. Everyone let's pray to whatever you believe in or just send good vibes that Denzel Washington beats Casey Affleck because right now Casey's the front runner but Denzel took the SAG award so let's do it. That was off topic, but anyway. The last book that I got from the Black Friday sale book outlet was The Silkworm by Robert Galbraith, aka J.K. Rowling, aka the second book to the... whatever the first one's called. What's the first one? I don't know, but it's the Corman Strike novels. I think it's like detective mystery dude. I don't even know if I like these, but like adult hardcovers are very expensive. And so when I saw this on book outlet, I was like, let me grab that. That was just one like one set of books from one purchase like why did I do this it's too much the next book came from a subscription box which I just tried it out for a month and then I didn't get it again because I saw that they had this book and it was like five dollars for your first time so I was like yes and that is The Sun is Also a Star by Nicola Yoon which 
everyone has been talking about. So if you haven't heard of it, I'm very surprised. This is a book about a Jamaican girl who is getting deported and she's like trying to figure out a way to stop this from happening. And on her journey, she meets a boy named David and the girl's name is Natasha. I believe. And he is heading to a university interview for like Yale or something and that's not really kind of what he wants but it's like for his parents and I believe he's Korean so it's just very diverse. It takes place in one day and I know it sounds like really cheesy but it's just not. <laughs> if you think you don't like contemporary I would give this one a shot anyway because I think it's one of those gems that rises from the genre of contemporary so yeah. The next little section is the book outlet Boxing Day sale, which I think was less crazy than Black Friday. I can't remember. Let's find out. First book I got from that is The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. This is about a princess that runs away from her kingdom because she's either about to be queen or about to be married or both and two people track them track her down one is the prince she was supposed to marry and one is someone that's trying to kill her and you don't know who is who that's just what i've heard every single person say about this book so you're probably like that's repetitive but that's all i know about it but i've heard it's really good i heard the main character is really awesome and i'm excited to read it which i've probably said a million times two books go together and that is The Winner's Crime and The Winner's Kiss both by Marie Rutowski these are the second and third book in the winner's kid winners the winner's curse the winner's curse trilogy I think it might just be the winner's trilogy I don't really know I read the first book yet but I do own it and I've heard so many good things that when I do read it I can just marathon the series now because I have them both Unless I don't like it and then I bought all these books for no reason, which would be classically me, but they're on book outlet so that makes it okay because it's cheap. Kind of. I say that now but in like a month I'm going to be like, why did I spend that five dollars? Next I have Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. This is the only Gillian Flynn book that I have not yet to read. I love everything that I've ever read from her. She's one of my all-time favorite authors and this is the last thing I have so I'm kind of savoring it. But I also just really want to read it because I love her book so much. And this one also became a movie and her other one, Sharp Objects, is becoming a TV show. I'm just, oh. yeah, I finally have this one so that I can read it and finish the collection and like Homegirl needs to come out with another book because I love her. Next I have Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This was really popular like a year, two years ago. It is a literary fiction book that I think is supposed to be kind of dystopian about a traveling circus group. All I've heard is that it's really good and that I should read it. So I have it to read. Next I have None of the Above by I.W. Gregorio. This follows an intersex character, if I'm saying that correct. I don't believe it is own voices, but I read a bit about the author and they're very like, they like run part of like the diverse, we need diverse books campaign. So I'm hoping this will be good and have good representation. If you know, let me know because I would like to know, but I'm excited to read it because I've never read about intersex character and yeah, also I really enjoy this cover. It's very simplistic, but like appealing. The last book, not in this haul, but in this section of the haul is What We Saw by Aaron Harlitzer, Hartz, Aaron something. This follows a rape case in a small town in a high school, so obviously trigger warnings for rape. This tells the story about what happens to this girl, kind of. It's not like from the girl's perspective, it's from like somebody else's. And it's just a very important book I feel. I really enjoyed it because I already read it. And I think it's a good story that everyone needs to read. The next two books I got with a gift card that I got for my birthday. So they're technically birthday books. Which was... Wow. R.I.P. Wow this video is already 17 minutes long. I hate myself. During the books. Knocked over. La la la. Oops, spoiler for the next one. The next book I have is Three Dark Crowns by Kendar Blake. This just sounded really good and I wanted to pick it up, so I did. It's about three sisters who have to like fight to be queen and like like fight to the death. And yeah, it sounds really interesting. They're like witches, I think. So I'm intrigued. I'm ready. 
I can't wait to read it. Next book, Crystal Storm by Morgan Rhodes. This is the fifth book in the Fallen Kingdom series. It's a series about kingdoms that are going at each other and a lot of political stuff going on. Lots of great characters. If you haven't read it, I recommend it. I realized I forgot to haul a book. This one that I got back in October, so it's like before all these other ones. It's been obvious because this is my favorite book of the year, Crooked Kingdom, Crooked Kingdom by Leigh Bardugo. Amazing. Second book in the Six of Crows du duology. If you haven't heard of it, you must be living under a rock. It's about these six, are there six of them? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, have their poster on my wall. But it's about six kind of rad tag volunteer art. No. It's about these six like thieves and kind of just people that are down on their luck that come together to pull off an incredible, amazing heist set in the Grishaverse. It's amazing if you haven't read it. I don't know what you're doing. Probably not reading. Crook Kingdom was the second book and it was amazing. This next book is an arc and I got it from the novel, so shout out to the novel. And that is Dreamland Burning by Jennifer Latham. This I'm a little bit of the ways into, so I don't know a bunch about it. But it is about a girl named Rowan who lives in the present day and they find a body um, buried in their backyard and we get to kind of hear both sides of the story, the one that happened in the 1920s and then the one that's happening in present day. It's really good. It's very social, like woke kind of like I hate saying that word. It has qualities that I didn't think it has. The main character has a black mom and a white dad so she's biracial. There's another POC character who is also asexual so it was just it's been really surprising so far. I didn't think it was gonna be that like but it is and I'm enjoying it so far. I'll let you know how it goes. The next two books go together and I've been wanting to read this for a while even though it's like hashtag trash but whatever. Um, it's A Court of Thorns and Roses and A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like these. Everyone talks about them. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. This one is slightly. I don't know about this one and I don't know. I think I'm gonna like it. I know Sarah J. Mass is not the most inclusive author or not even the most like she's the least <laughs> inclusive author but she writes really addicting books. Maybe not the best book ever. Definitely not the best book ever, but very addicting. So I'm ready to get in these and learn about who the heck these people are because everyone keeps talking about them. I'm just like, I don't know who that is. And finally, we are onto the unboxing portion of this video. The reason I wanted to film this today because I don't want to wait to open this. So this is from Book Outlet because they were having a 15% flash sale and I was like, well, gotta do it because there was a book that I really wanted and they had it. So I did it. Wow, I started filming this at 3 and it's 3.22. How tragic. Annoying this stuff. More of this stuff. This is better than those little, like, little tiny worm things. Oh my god, I would, no. Don't ever send those to me. Okay, just gonna go with the first thing that I see in here. Said the shotgun to the head by Saul Williams. This is smaller than I thought it was going to be. But this is a poetry, I'm gonna put this box down, it's making so much This is a poetry book. I don't really know much about it, but Whitney from Witty Novels was like praising the heck out of it, saying it was so good. And it has like really interesting like, like typography and like the way it's written. And yeah, she just praised it a lot and I want to get more into poetry. I don't think I own a single poetry book unless you count like books in verse, which even then it's one. So I'm excited to read this. It's going to be really, really quick. And it's just, it's a cute little book, isn't it? Like, where am I going to put her? I'm going to show the next thing next because it's also uh, inspired by Whitney from Whitney Novels. Because uh, she hauled this in her book outlet haul and it is <laughs> Garden Sticky Notes. So not a book, obviously, but I've been getting in to like journaling and all that fun. I can't open the tin. But I've been getting into journaling and all that fun kind of stuff. And these are just really cute. If you can see that, like sticky notes. Don't look at my nails, they're tragic. But um, Garden Sticky Notes with like little flowers and other little things that are really cute to put in a journal and it comes in this really cute honestly the tin I'm loving this tin like a plus anyway back to actual books the book 
that I bought these books because of is Truth Witch by Susan Dennard. I've heard a lot of good things about this, but I didn't really want to pay full price for it. And then I saw it on Book Owl and I was like, yes! Not really sure what it's about except, you know, witches and like a truth witch who can like tell that you're telling the truth or tell when you're not. And I heard it has a really great female friendship. I'm all about female friendships. Female everything who run the world, girls. Beyonce's having twins, did you hear? What if they're both girls? I'll be shook. Next I have The Conspiracy of Us by Maggie Hall. I heard about this one from Lainey from Ginger Reads Lainey and I don't know, I think it's just like a spy kind of novel. Um, and the cover's really intriguing. I'm just intrigued. And finally, the last book in this haul. Thank God, hallelujah, amen, praise whatever you praise. The last book in the haul is The Villain Boyfriend by Casey West. I have no idea what this is, but I'm sure it's a cute contemporary. I've read one of Casey West's contemporary before and I absolutely loved it, although that was a few years ago. So I don't know, I might have changed a little, so we'll see if I still like her writing and her contemporaries, but this was really cheap and I'm very excited to read it because like I said, I loved her last one, so yeah. If I even try to pick these up, I think I might die if I try to pick these up, but you know what? Let's do it. Oh my god, I'm already tired. I only have four books in my hand. Here we go. We'll put Saul on top. I can't. I can't. There's still one, two, three, four, five, six, plus the garden hose. Oh, and it's already up to my chin. Thank you. So these are the books that I got in this book haul, besides six others that I can't pick up. But I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was very long. Hopefully I can cut it down a whole lot in editing. This is probably a really bad shot, but oh well. See you guys in my next video. <laughs> Bye.